to another video of my life. And it's been a while, um, I've got to admit, but I've had a good excuse. I've been doing a lot of filming, been working on some big projects for Fearless Training. So after the competition, I wanted to really capitalize on that momentum. So what I've been doing is I've been working hard to create a video course for my clients, for the Fearless family, and anyone really who wants to improve their health and fitness and their body composition, their lifestyle, mainly for strength-based athletes, but even anyone who wants to get in shape and just look better, feel better, and really understand the fundamental principles of training and nutrition in respect to lifestyle as well. So there's been a lot going on. I do apologize, the YouTube videos are still gonna be coming your way. So this one is a bit of a, an update of what's been happening, what's been going on over the past month or so, training-wise, lifestyle-wise, etc. The first thing that I think is worth mentioning is that I'm gonna be finally doing one-on-one -on -one coaching again at EMF, so that's Elite Military Fitness in Rabina. Rabina is like uh, becoming the central hub. It's like the new city, if you like, um, or the biggest um, city, or whatever you wanna call it, in the Gold Coast. It's gonna be the new sort of meeting place. It's been building up for a couple of years, the infrastructure, so it's a really smart place to place myself in the business. I'm a coach, then who coaches the coach? So I've got some really good business mentors and some training mentors from Hold Your Own and other surrounding gyms who are on board and, and can really help propel me forward and just make sure, keep me accountable really as well, as well as providing good information so that I can keep upskilling and provide the best quality and content and information to my clients as well. And I believe that's really important because you've always gotta be moving ahead because if you're not going forward, you're standing still in that respect. So I'll be starting there first of March. I'll be putting some more stuff around on social as well. I have been a bit quiet on social because I'm mainly focusing on putting a lot of this content and my energy into what matters, which is fearless training. It's for my clients, it's my dream, it's my love, it's my passion. I really want to get that up and running. And again, I, I do believe that, I don't know, like posting on Instagram all the time, sometimes it just, it gets very monotonous and it's, it's exhausting, you know, and I want to post when I want to post and it was getting to the point where it's a little bit robotic. So I've kind of just backed it off to once a week and again, trying to post about something that I want to post about, provide something to the audience. It provides something to you that is watching. And since spending less time doing all of that, like I've turned a lot of my notifications off. I only check social once, maybe twice a day maximum. And obviously I have the important phone calls and messages coming in because, you know, emergencies, that's kind of why mobile phones are created in the first place. It's been a lot more freeing and I really encourage a lot of you, if you are finding that you're spending a lot of time on social, turn your notifications off, get into a better routine. It's something that a lot of people will say, you know, <laughs> I've done it myself, I've kind of ignored the information, then I'm like, okay, I need to do that. And since I have been doing it, I must say, I feel much better, I have a lot more clarity and focus, and I get a lot more done as well. Most of the comp prep um, negative effects have been reversed. I'm really looking forward to the future, and again, doing what I love, and, and getting back into the industry, putting my money where my mouth is, and being able to positively impact the lives of a lot of people, because at the end of the day, we're all in this together, and if I can provide some better information, I feel obligated from what I've learned to provide what I know and what I've learned, then you know that's job done to, to coach and inspire others. Training's been going really well. I've mainly just been regaining, I think, a lot of lost muscle mass. I'm back around the 76 kilo mark now. A little higher in body fat, or a little more, carrying a little bit more body fat around the midsection than I'd like. However, that's kind of normal after comp prep, especially 
first time through. I didn't really go over the top. I'm pretty pleased with the end result. However, I do want to clean things up now. You know, hormone levels are back up, fully running, and again, a lot of the negative effects have been reversed. I think it's time to just tidy things up. I won't lose any strength. I'll keep progressing, and I'll run sort of a six to eight week mini cut, which will tidy things up. Um, because I don't think it's necessary to carry this much body fat around the midsection, even though I'm not overweight. It's just the body fat redistribution after a comp rep or being at very low body fat percentiles, and it can have some pretty weird effects on the way you redistribute body fat. So I'm just gonna tidy things up a little bit and I will document and post about that as well as and when I can, probably in the next YouTube video and on Instagram, but only once a week, because again, I'm not gonna be super active there. So we are starting a new series, it's called Raw Knowledge, as in Raw Knowledge. Yeah, play on words, okay, well done, fearless training, where I am interviewing some of the industry's best, so the most legitimate athletes, coaches, influencers, entrepreneurs, and teasing out the best information um, in a practical manner, in an interview style. So that I can share that information with all of you and better raise the standard of the industry's knowledge and again contribute contribute positively. I think there's a bit of an uprise and a turning point now in a lot of that. I'm noticing a lot of people who were not so big on social but have the knowledge and now becoming the more recognized sources of knowledge, if you like, and a lot of the Instagram and fitness models are kind of fading away because the, a lot of people are just realizing it's a lot of bullshit. So it's good that that's happening. I'm gonna play some training highlights for you guys as well. This is just a little bit of a leg day, um, what's been going on. Basically, I'm just accumulating volume still. I'm running through a periodization of doing 10s, 8s, 6s, 4s. So I'm just slowly building up that volume, really again focusing on skill acquisition, quality of movement, and again, that progressive overload over time. So I think after the mini cut in about eight weeks, that's when I'll actually start to make progress or go forth into territory where I'm actually building mass again, I'll be in a slight surplus and my strength will probably surpass and my actual total volume will surpass where I was um, or start to where I was before comp prep. So that's really exciting as well. Really focusing on that quality and again, I'll keep documenting that for you guys. However, it has come to my attention that a lot of people do not know how to meal prep. Um, now, again, this is really basic fundamental things. So I wanna share with you on this video a little bit of how I do my own meal prep, some strategies, some recipes that you can use as well. It's not hard, guys, and it saves a lot of time and a lot of money. You don't have to do it for every day or every meal, but if you can get a majority done, it's gonna save you time and it's gonna help you to become a lot more adherent. It's definitely something that will set you up for success, especially if you're in the early um, stages of training and you wanna get some consistency, you wanna save some money, you wanna eat good meals, you wanna get the nutrition in. If it's there and it's already made, you're gonna eat it. Without further ado, let me show you some meal prep tips, tricks. This is just something that I like to do. I've been doing it for years. It's nice and easy. I like to cook fresh once to twice a week. Well, you know, sometimes I'll go out and out to the off season and enjoy a meal as well. But for the most part, I like to prep my meals. I make them tasty, so I actually look forward to eating these meals as well. And then I just interchange my snacks and breakfast, so it gives me that nice structure and that flexibility as well. So anyway, guys, check it out, and I'll see you in the kitchen. Let's get into it. So 
We've got the meal prep here guys, what we're going to do is I'll do some close up clips and maybe break the video in between some time lapses because obviously you don't want to sit here and watch me cook for an hour, it usually takes me about an hour to get this done, this is just the way I do it, so again take whatever you can away from it, we'll do some more in depth videos on this in the Fearless Training United membership group which I mentioned earlier and probably in a little bit more detail going over every single thing. But this is just a basic overview of some meal prep. You can grab some ideas, some things that you guys might do for your training, um, some food choices, some food groups. It might be some little hacks as well, like, oh, okay, I'm gonna weigh my food this way, or I'm gonna pick that food and, and quantify it in that way. So if you've got any questions, as always, comment section below, but I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna highlight the main things that have helped me. So enjoy, grab some food, sit back, relax. What I've done in the time lapse that you've seen is I've put the rice on. I like to cook the rice or the carbohydrate part of the meal first, whatever is the most time consuming. And then once that's done, I can put that into the bowls, which I've got prepared over here, which I'm gonna put some more stuff in now because while the rice is cooking, we might as well be productive and do something else. I usually knock this out in about an hour. If you're starting out, give yourself a little bit more time, but obviously I've been meal prepping for years, so I can do it quite fast. But again, this is something that can save you a lot of time. If you think about how long it would take you to prepare each of these meals every day individually, think about all the hours you can save to do other things. It is nice to cook fresh, I do understand that, but you can do that once or twice a week. But if you prepare these meals now, it means you've got more hours and more time to do things that you like with people you enjoy spending time with or whether you've got projects on the go or you're trying to go from working for someone else or to be self-employed as well. So again, more time is always good. Anyway, so what I've done with the rice is I have weighed it dry. Now, I won't go into this in too much detail, but weighing things before they're cooked is generally a lot more accurate because as you add, oh, this rice is boiling over, but you can see here, this is what I've done. I've got the basmati rice on the boil. So I might just turn that down, it doesn't take too long to cook. And then over here in this one, I have got, excuse me, the handle is broken, the brown rice, which takes a little bit longer because generally it's a bit more of a starchy carbohydrate. And that's just the nature of it. Okay, so I've calculated the quantities based on the meals I'm having and then what I will do is I will divide that at the end. I'm not gonna weigh it again then uh, once it's cooked because I've calculated it once it's raw. I'm just gonna distribute it evenly in the meals because as we know, energy balance, either way, I have accounted for, in this case, say with the basmati rice, 750 grams throughout the week. So either way, it's gonna be spread evenly and at some point, all of those 750 grams are gonna be in. So why that's boiling, what I like to do is to prepare some other things. So I'm just doing some garlic, some tomatoes, I've already got some pre-sliced mushrooms, a great way to save time is to buy things like this. And again, your frozen veg, there's nothing wrong with frozen vegetables. We know now that they are almost as good as fresh and to be honest, they save a lot of time as well. And for what it's worth, it's a great way to just get those um, vegetables and, and fruits in as well. So I, I use a lot of frozen berries as well in my breakfast and another meals as well. So good pro tip there uh, i'm sure some of you do that and then what i'm going to do as well for example i'm making a mexican for lunch and a thai for dinner so i'm going to add some of the elements like i'm going to prepare i have i like the nachos keep it traditional with the mexican so i'm going to add that into some bags and divide that up with what i've calculated within my macros for the week so in the mornings all i'm going to do is take my food out of the fridge or the freezer I've got my pre, um, pre-mixed pre bags and all I've got to do really is make my breakfast. And I can just grab and go, grab and go, and it's really easy and again, time efficient. And I look forward to eating these foods because I've planned ahead, I've calculated them in my fitness pal, so I know what I'm eating and I look forward to it because I've made them tasty. So you don't have to spend loads of time to create tasty meals. And if you make them tasty and you look forward to them and you learn some basic cooking skills, you're gonna be, um, you're gonna be more adherent, okay? So everything you do is gonna be more flexible, sustainable, and most importantly, it's gonna be enjoyable.
two. So what I'm gonna do is we'll go for a bit of a time lapse again. I'm gonna chop some of the garlic up, the tomatoes, and I'm gonna distribute some of the other elements here. Like I've got some cashew nuts for the Thai, and I've got some mushrooms, and again, and frozen veggies. I'm gonna distribute those into the containers ready. And then when it's time to cook the meat, we will come back and do a little bit of a chat about what I'm doing and some tips for you to implement. So time lapse in three, two, one. Pro tip, don't actually wave a very sharp knife around. Make sure you put that down somewhere safe. Now, in all seriousness, so we're up to the meat now. Uh, I'm gonna cook the beef first, then I'm gonna cook the chicken. Before I segue into that, what I've done, just to recap, is I've cooked my rice, and the brown rice is still, I'm just waiting for that to um, soak up a little bit more of the juices, if you like. So this is the Mexican dish, and this is the Thai dish. So, what I did is I put the mushrooms, the chopped mushrooms on the bottom of each, and then I've distributed the frozen veggies of the stir fry into the stir fry mix with some spinach. I've also added to the rice, black beans, salsa, and as you can see, sour cream. And then I will then add the beef mince on top of that again, all calculated out, all macroed. And I've also done in the meantime, which you may have seen on the time lapse, is I've chopped up some garlic and onions, which I've added, but then, <coughs> which is, by the way, for flavor, I don't add a lot of calories. If you're in comp prep, yes, it's probably worth tracking every single thing to a degree. Anything that has a calorie value because you want to be 100% accurate. But in the off season, things that don't really contain many calories like tomatoes, garlic, etc., you can leave them out, especially when you get good at um, eating mindfully or eating a little bit more intuitively. So what I've done is I've put also my tortilla chips in a bag as well. They're all weighed out. So when I go to lunch, I grab my lunch, I have my tortilla chips because I like something else to eat and again it's a bit more like that Mexican feel and they're all ready to go so this again just saves me a little bit of time in the morning now I will put the rice into the stir fry dishes once it's soaked up another little tip for you if you like or something that I enjoy is I've been using these flavor drops from my protein no I'm not sponsored by my protein I don't get a kickback or anything like that this is just something that's cheap, it's affordable, it got recommended to me by a friend. They have next to zero calories, it's literally just sugar alcohols. They taste great, they're easy to add into your foods, brilliant when you're comp prepping, but also if you want to save calories and do things like coconut rice, which I do, or again, you know, you've got your chocolate, you've got your white chocolate, you've got raspberry, you've got all sorts of flavorings, your imagination is your only limitation there. So I add that to my rice, again, to save on calories, and it adds that nice sweet coconut flavor as well as the green curry paste as well, which is relatively low calorie. So again, saving time, saving money, but still adding flavor. Um, wash up as you go along, <laughs> save yourself some time. Anyway, back to the meat. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cook beef. It cooks the fastest, so I'm gonna get that in the pan. I'm gonna add some garlic and some onion for flavor. And I'll probably add as well some salt, pepper, and maybe some herbs and spices. Again, low in calories, adds a lot of flavor. Understand the basic ones. Again, the basics are the best, like your salt and pepper, your soy sauce, your grounded chili, things like that. Don't go OTT, learn what works. Throw it in the pan, and again, it just adds it and makes it more flavorsome. And then I'm going to, actually, what I did by last week, which I forgot, is the burrito seasoning. So I'll add that into my beef. Now, you can buy this at any supermarket. It's relatively low calorie and again it just adds that authentic flavor depending on what you want to go with obviously it's never going to be as good as mom's home cooked lasagna but um you know unless you've got a mexican wife why not uh, <laughs> uh, what i'm going to do with my chicken is uh, now i usually buy it in bulk because it's cheaper you can buy it sliced up look it's really up to you but i'm trying to save some cash at the minute it takes me an extra five minutes just to chop any of the excess fat 
and chop it up into pieces. But again, I will time lapse this. And then by the time I've done this, by the magic of television, YouTube and filming, we will be done and I'll explain the finished product and any lasting notes and thoughts on meal prep. So again, can we get a time lapse please? And um, no, did that not work? No, we'll try. And we are done. Okay guys, so what we've got here is I've got my lunches for the week and I've also got my dinners. I've done five dinners from Monday through Friday and I've done six lunches from Monday through Saturday. That's how I like to do it because I cook fresh on the Saturday and the Sunday. I, you know, I just sort of flexible diet if you like it and just fill my calories with whatever I'm craving or if I want something different or if I'm going out with friends. So again, it allows me that little bit of flexibility within that as well. What do I have as well as these meals? So in the morning I have oats or some sort of cereal and then I have sort of that, which is a bit of a pre-workout meal because I train in the morning. And then after that, again, I have some sort of oats again with protein powder. Sounds boring, but I just love it. I have different fruits and different nuts in there and it's something that I'm really enjoying. It works, it's cost effective, so I'm gonna keep it in for the time being and uh, it tastes like a dessert. So again, you've got to, uh, <sighs> The foods that you choose should be defined by the goals that you have within your body composition, your health, your preferences as well, and again, your macronutrient and calorie targets. So there's no good or bad foods. It comes down to what you wanna eat. So again, hopefully this will give you some idea of what you could do, not what you have to do within your meal prep. This is all ready to go. It's gonna save me time, it's gonna save me money, it's gonna keep me adhering to my goals. Again, I don't have to meal prep, it's just something I choose to do because again, it fits in my lifestyle because I want to improve my body composition even at this stage. And again, I wanna save time to do other things and so I can put out more great content like this for you guys on YouTube. So again, if you watch the video, give it a like, share, subscribe if you're new, comment down below with any questions and I'm happy to help where I can. Stay tuned for more updates. I'm gonna try and get a video out. I did say every week, it's probably gonna be every month maximum at this stage. It's a bit more realistic just because I'm pumping a lot of other videos out for the Fearless Training United content, uh, which will be available for all of you very soon. So keep your eyes peeled on that. And as always, until next time, stay fearless.